I, I guess we could call this a slow week, which I'm all prepared for a it's slow week. It's too bad week. because I brought actual popcorn. Except, guess who showed up in the F news again doing F crazy stupid Tootsie Fruitsie. No. Yes. So it Did he like out, actually like fornicate with roadkill this time or something? Close. Uh, there's a reporter called Olivia Nuzzi and Nuzzi or whatnot. And oh, yeah. She got her start working as an intern for Anthony Weiner, the, probably the most yep. unfortunately named politician in the history of politics. Um, and for y'all who don't know, Olivia Nuzzi is very pretty. Hmm. And uh, she's also, she's uh, f literally 40 years younger. Than, than Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Four She's one of the few reporters years. who Rudy Giuliani always takes her calls. Which is why I bring up that she's very pretty. Not, not as a knock on out, her, but like old disgusting men give her access because she's very pretty. And it turns out that she's, she has done uh, reporting on him. She has, she has written articles about RFK Jr. And... She's also wrote about other candidates, like specifically Biden and how he's old and, you know, all that. Um, turns out she was sending him naked pictures. While she is also engaged to another reporter who got fired from several outlets for sexual yeah. harassment. Yeah. When I tell you Olivia Nuzzi is very pretty, the girl is very pretty. The woman. I don't know how the f RFK Jr. is pulling this girl. <laughs> we well, need standards. The bar is in hell. You see, we and I don't understand this... how these regulation hotties are winding up with wrinkly old used scrotums with eyeballs. We call this access journalism. See, we used to have other kinds of journalism, like we don't need investigative access to, his... to do the journalism. <laughs> Apparently they do. He Apparently. doesn't need access to your vagina to do did, the journalism. Did you hear um what the f Ben Smith, who's in charge of Semaphore after he was, you know, fired from BuzzFeed. Um, he was like, he I swear to God today, he was like, we need more reporters having sex with their sources to keep things interesting. And I'm like, what the f, f are you talking about? They didn't listen. I minored in journalism. There was no class on that. There was no f f your source 202. Each week, Catherine, radio data audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And uh, let's go to Florida to start with. Why does that feel like a relief at this point? Um, now, look, I have never professed to be a, a a perfect driver. I think I'm doing okay. I've had a couple accidents, especially when I was younger. But you, I, I have, there have been space between them. One was my fault, one was not. And the space between them was long years. And it's not even my job to drive. So you would think if it was your job to drive something and you got in an accident, that would be, you know, you'd have time to reflect on, you'd pause there because livelihoods involved. But then again, Florida. Same shrimp boat strikes Fork Myers Beach, uh, Mentazas Pass Bridge for second day in a row. Forrest Gump. Just a day after a shrimp boat's outrigger caused a major traffic disruption, the same boat hit the Mentazas Passes Pass Bridge again on Tuesday morning. On Tuesday, the Florida Department of Transportation reported that the bridge was hit by the same shrimp boat from Monday's crash. Florida Department of Transportation described the boat's outrigger striking the bridge, after which the shrimp boat backed away. Hey, at least the bridge didn't just crumble like a house of cards. 
Because well, that's a possibility we didn't know about till recently. Yeah. The Department of Transportation, they have dispatched a bridge inspection team to assess the bridge and document the damage. On Monday, all lanes of the bridge were closed for about four hours while the shrimp boat's outrigger was dislodged from under the bridge. And then he smacked it again with the same part of the boat and just didn't get it stuck again. How the fuck? I don't know if... uh... Driving a shrimping boat is the right career for you, sir or madam. Was was this like a was was this like um a, a groundhog day thing? <laughs> did they accidentally it's play the, Cher it's Sunny the Disney and, attraction? Did they accidentally play Sunny Sunny and Cher on the radio two days in a <laughs> row and you got confused? Is that what happened? It's the new Disney World attraction. They're just making rides out of real life disasters now just the same part of the boat twice you're fired well you can't see the thing is tim i'm going to presume i could be wrong but i'm going to presume that's his boat that's how that shit works you own the boat you go out you get the shrimp you bring it back you sell it to somebody okay yeah so I mean, is this going to happen again? How many times is he going to do this? Until that fucking bridge learns its lesson. <laughs> no, this, could act- this could actually technically qualify for a Guinness Book World Record if he does it enough times. I mean, It'll how be many a very times would he have category. to? You would think two would be the most. <laughs> That should be a low bar. Yeah, we we are, like you said, we are incredibly lucky that the bridge didn't just say, fuck it. Because you don't know, our infrastructure is kind of a mess these days. Because we, we built a whole bunch of this shit back in the 1960s, and then we're like, okay. It's fine. Like this shit, it's like some of those castles in fucking Scotland and shit. They're going to be there for fucking, no, it's not like that. That's not how that works. Like every time I'm in New York, every time I'm driving over a bridge, I'm just like, just don't let this be the day. Just don't let this be the day. The frog's neck just fucking gives out. (laughs) I can also imagine trying to explain to your boss why you're late because a shrimp boat hit the bridge. Again, yeah, you used that excuse yesterday. <laughs> no, but seriously, turn on the news, man. <laughs> oh, well, moving on along more Florida this is from Miami Beach. Um, again, this is where, where pop culture kind of gives us this very stupid expectation of things like crime in particular you expect a car thief to have a basic grasp of what they're doing to have some sort of knowledgeable and skills and know how to handle stealing shit they have to right they're a car thief they're not going to just jump in without understanding what they're trying to steal right um. can i get out South Beach burglar trapped in Corvette begs its owner for help. Miami Beach owner faced an unusual situation when he discovered an intruder trapped inside his car and asked him for help to get out. Quote, my brother, this is not your car. This is my car. Julio Solano, the owner of the car, asked 33-year-old Ravesh Rabindranath, can I get out? Robin Jonathan was heard asking. No, you can't get out. We're calling the cops. Solano told Local 10 News on Tuesday he was stunned after he returned to his car after breakfast morning and found Robin Jonathan sitting inside pleading for help. Incident unfolded at a garage on Washington Avenue. Um, Solano believes that Rob, while Robin Jonathan managed to break into the vehicle, he was unable to start it or escape due to the car's security system. The car's electrical. Cars can lock you in now. 
They don't function without the keys, and fortunately, he didn't know about the manual door release under the seat. Investigators say Solano would notify the owner of uh, Premier Auto Miami One, exotic car rental company that stores uh, its vehicles in the garage. Authorities say uh, Rob Adronath was read his Miranda rights and agreed to speak with officers. Routine records check revealed no criminal history or outstanding warrants. This was the day, huh? Th this was this was what you were going to start on. This was this you you. You're, instead of climbing a hill, you went day one Everest. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, bro. Newer cars, newer cars, as I understand it, are a little bit harder to take off with because everything's computerized now. Like it used to be if you knew which wires to rub together. Yeah, they don't they don't mention which model Corvette or which year it is. So I'm not sure. I mean, presumably it's a pretty new one because it has a security system and. Just he got he got in there, he got in the car, he started fucking around with it. It was like. Oh, wait darn. a minute. I just didn't know the car could lock you in. Well, it technically it didn't. It's just you can't the, the electric locks don't work. That's why there's a manual release right under the seat. It it hasn't actually locked you in. It's just he was too stupid to be aware the, of the that. Current, the current car they drive the president around in doesn't open from the inside. Like the Secret Service has to open the doors from the outside. And I remember when I learned that and I was like, that seems really unsafe. Like on the one hand, you don't want the president just leaping out of the car like an idiot. But on the other, fire happens sometimes. Yeah. It seems unlikely that the president's car would go into a river, but not impossible. Like that doesn't seem like a great safety feature to me. And I remember being really confused by it that like you could just trap the fucking president in his car. The more, you know, just buddy. And people are pointing out the channel is maybe he hasn't gotten caught before. You, you really, you really think that this guy, yeah, he's is, he's is, a fucking mastermind. You really think this guy has been racking up, stealing cars, setting them on boats, sending them to shop shops? You really think this guy and the, this did, only this was the day he was foiled for the first time? No, 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 no. I, I I'm, this might not be the best place to talk about the president's car. I I have no intention of harming any president. I'm just saying I don't think it's a great safety feature. And this was stuff they broadcast on the news. So I'm not I'm not giving away <laughs> any state secrets or anything. If you guys think I have a security clearance. I don't know for what I'm professionally nice to cats. I, well, th th doesn't the president have a cat? No, he's got a couple dogs. Oh, well. So. He is a cat too. He does. Okay. Her well, name's Willow. There you go. She's a little gray cat. She's very cute. Okay. So often on this show, we get stories that seem like there should be more. And yet there are, there is not. And this is definitely one of those there really should be more here. I think you're, you're kind of burying the lead. Is this also Florida? Good Lord. This is, uh, no, this is not, this is okay. This is LA. This is LA. Okay. So cool. Okay. So we're in LA for this one. Cool. I, I really feel like something more needs to be said here. One million dollar cash in cardboard box stolen from back of vehicle, victim claims. Officers of South Bay took report of a vehicle break in last week. The victim claims resulted in one million dollars being taken from the car. 
Happened on September 13th near the intersection of uh, 15th Street and Laurel Avenue, according to Manhattan Beach Police Department. Victim told officers they had parked their vehicle along the curb in front of a nearby school and went inside the gym with their child. After an undisclosed amount of time, the vehicle owner and their child returned to find the rear passenger window had been shattered. The victim told police that a cardboard box was stolen from inside the vehicle, a box containing $1 million in cash. Police have not said if the victim's story checks out, but police department's weekly crime su summary, officials say a GPS device was found affixed to the vehicle. Status of the investigation is unclear at this time. So many questions here. So let me just, you have a million dollars in cash. Yes. That for whatever reason you need to transport from one place to another. Yes. So you decide to put it in a cardboard box. Yes. As though it's a t-shirt you're going to ship. You toss it in the car. But oh gosh, little Timmy has to get to school. <laughs> so you drive little Timmy to school and you figure you might as well walk him in and you leave your cardboard box containing a million dollars in cash unattended in the car. Right. And again, I would be sitting there going, come on, come on, really? Except the cops are like, I don't no, leave my phone in the car when I go to the mail room in my own neighborhood for two minutes. My two versions old phone with a cracked screen. Well, I mean, and, and I would be sitting here going like, come on, you're bullshitting, man. Except the cops are like, no, there's a GPS on the, someone was tracking this guy's car. So that only leads to more this questions. Feels like fraud. Maybe it that just leads to more questions. This like, feels like theft. Maybe. But otherwise, that means number one, someone knew you had a million dollars. In a cardboard box. In a cardboard box. Two, that person was tracking your car with a GPS. Three, this must happen regularly enough that they know you're carrying around a million dollars in a cardboard box and tracking your car. What are you into, motherfucker? Like, something's going on. This story's just like... Well, we don't know. Yeah. Here's what we know. Have fun. No. Drill down. Find more. Like, my friend, you have a million dollars in cash. You can buy a briefcase with a lock. I don't but know. Was, I've never seen a million dollars in cash. I don't know how big of a box you need for that. I guess it depends on what kind of bills we're talking. But with a million dollars... I promise you, you can buy a locking box big enough and you can open the trunk and put it inside. <laughs> Maybe this was like camouflage. Maybe they're like, nobody's going to fuck with a cardboard box. Why would they fuck with a cardboard box? If I put a big briefcase in there or like a lock box, somebody will fuck with it. But cardboard box, who's going to fuck with a cardboard box, right? Like that old that old fake SNL commercial where the the theft device on the luxury car was that it was a really shitty car. Yes, right. Who's gonna fuck with it? It's a cardboard box. Who wants a cardboard box? But then, like, oh, no. take the two seconds and put it in the trunk. And of course, like you said, the other option here is in fact they're trying to tell the police, "No, I lost a whole million dollars," which is not a good idea. Because oh no, I'm positing that there actually was a million dollars, but that the two people are in on it together. There's so much because here it's we, insured, wait, or something. That's, that's just us here asking the hard questions on the fucking internet. Who did this, Travis? Travis Schlepp, you wrote this, and that's it. You're sort of like, well, my job's You're just done. Like, well, your job's yeah. not done, sir. There's a lot Who, to what, know when, here. Where, why? 
Who, what, when, where, why? There's, Who, there's what, a lot when, to... where, why? There's more to know. All right. Nobody ever fucking asked the why. You're all too busy sleeping with your sources. Our next one's from London. And uh, if this was not, had not been an actual government fucking agency involved, I probably wouldn't be talking about it, but (sighs) we are here in the dystopia which is not the dystopia you thought it was going to be. It's it's not the it's not the the dark and gritty cyberpunk shadow run dystopia. It's as I like to call it the Douglas Adams Memorial dystopia is is the one we're in. It's just the most boring dystopia. It's and not yes, the Hunger Games, it's not Mad Max. And yes, the corporation It's just a long slow slog into hell. And yes, the corporations do in fact run everything in in the stupidest, stupidest fucking way. Family told to change son Skywalker name or seek Disney's permission. What? A family was a family was told to change their son's name or receive permission from Disney. After a passport application was rejected. British family's seven-year-old son was denied a passport because of his middle name. We were not aware this could be a potential issue, the boy's father told Suffolk News. We understand that Loki's middle name is copyrighted. We have no intention of using it for personal gain. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You named your child Loki Skywalker? Loki Skywalker Mowbray. Pick a fucking fandom. (laughs) Crossing the streams there. Yeah. Post reported that Christian Mowbray's son. Pick good or evil. Fuck. Uh, Christian Mowbray's son was born May 4th, 2017. He was born on Star Wars Day. An homage to the hit franchise. The boy's parents decided to name him Loki Skywalker Mowbray. Not Luke. Not Luke. Oh, man, this kid, this kid is not, this kid's school life is going to suck. Uh, the Post reported the family had no problems with their son's name for the first seven years of his life. That changed when the Mowbray family began making plans to visit the Dominican Republic in tr- October. When speaking with Suffolk, New- Suffolk News, the family said they would have been their first vacation since 2014. According to the Post, uh, blah, 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 blah. Home Office, the government department which handles passport applications in the United Kingdom, among other duties, denied the seven-year-old's application because it was unable to print Skywalker due to a Disney copyright. Home Office officials told the Mowbrays they would either need to change their son's name or contact Disney to get permission to use Skywalker. just don't know if i buy that because how many people are named after pop culture shit these days like how many little girls are walking around named khaleesi the poor dears when that wasn't even her name it was her title but whatever (laughs) what why in the fuck are you the home office for the united kingdom acting as an unofficial representative of the Walt Disney Corporation. And that oh, no, can't, this can't be the first time this has come up. What is it with the, the, this has got to be one particular guy. Now I can, under, I, I can a little understand this and you, you it, it's for a stupid reason. Did you ever work somewhere where if you ever made a decision on your own, no matter what it was, you get yelled at. Yeah. This is a guy who has been that works in the home office. That's a cushy fucking job. That's pension and shit. He's terrified. I can tell he, she, they are terrified of whatever the fuck. So they are not, no, no, I'm, I'm not going to let this. No, I'm not getting in trouble. I'm not, 
Have you asked the maybe, Disney people? Maybe he was just pissed off that these people named their kid Loki Skywalker and just was like, you know what? Fuck you. Pick one. Have you asked Disney if it's okay to name your son that? Can you just have you at can you ask Disney if it's okay? It's like you wouldn't say that about a kid named Mickey? No. I just imagine the, the getting a call at Disney legal. They're like, what? Like we there's gotta be care. 400 kids running around named Anakin. We, we don't, we, the, the fuck do we care? We don't fucking care. We, we don't the fucking name kid. What it was like, we have to get a fucking Disney to sign a permission slip. <laughs> what the fuck? Can you imagine being the paralegal that gets that call? Yeah. What? Um, I guess so. I gotta. I'm an intern. I gotta ask my boss. I don't know. <sighs> now well, listen. I oh, have. Yeah. I have all Marvel named cats. Yeah. And I have mostly Wandavision named ferals. Mm. But they're cats. If yeah. I were to have human children, I feel like if you're gonna have human children. Fandom names are not out out of the question, but make them names that are also names. Like I yeah. have a friend who's also a very big fan of Lost, and she has two sons named Ben and Desmond. They you know those know. are fandom names. You wouldn't fucking know. But they're know. just if you haven't watched the show, they're just names. Right. You wouldn't fucking know. You don't need to name your kid Luna Lovegood Jones, okay? Don't do that to them. Because the person who wrote Luna Lovegood might wind up being a piece of shit. Yeah, there's that. Or your kid might not like Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, God. That's, and then that's, their life that's sucks. Just, that's just, yeah. Like, fandom name's fine, but, like, keep it subtle. You know? All right. Next one is, is Florida again. And this one... There was an idea here. There was a there was a plan. It was just a bad plan. You're in trouble with the cops. You have contraband. You need to get rid of the evidence. Sure. The evidence does not go right up your fucking nose. Florida man snorts cocaine to hide evidence and have a look at the fucking picture. Oh, the picture. The picture, yes. Good job, buddy. Hol Good job. Holiday Don't Florida. Florida man was arrested earlier this week in Pascal County after fleeing a traffic stop and attempting to conceal illegal drugs by ingesting them. Troopers said they tried to stop the driver, later identified as 40-year-old Joel Craig Wallace, Allegedly speeding on US 19. Wallace reportedly refused to stop, leading to a brief pursuit that ended when he arrived at his res residence on Kibler Lane. Before his arrest, Wallace ingested cocaine in an attempt to hide the drugs. Faces charges of fleeing and eluding, possession of cocaine, and tampering with evidence. How much cocaine, my friend, did you suddenly <laughs> inhale? in a desperate and stupid attempt to stay out of jail. Also, like, <laughs> if, you're already, if you're already up for a traffic stop and your solution to, oh, I have drugs, is let me real quick do all the drugs, you're probably getting that field sobriety test. <laughs> you're not going to pass. <laughs> Sir, do you have any uh, legal uh, drugs or contraband on your person? No. Why do you ask? No. Yeah. It's just, it just powdered sugar. I was eating a donut. I was eating a donut. That is it's powdered sugar. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's what? It's no big. It's no oh, big. buddy. It's baking soda. I was on my way back from, uh, from a cupcake class is what it is. Uh, that's what happens. 
I mean, yeah. I guess the good news is his brain didn't fucking explode. Like you watch Dylan Hollis on, on YouTube making a stuff. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm learning to cook. I'm baking like crazy. It's, it's yeah. It's amazing. How are you? You, I'm amazed. This guy is just not dead. Just like, yeah. Bang. How much fucking cocaine did you suck down? It's like, ah, it's fine. Of all the drugs, like I, I know we always say like the old drugs still work, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But I really feel like of all the methods of doing a drug, I find having to snort it the worst. It actually eats away at your septum. Yeah. Like That's... your your septum, it just it'll disintegrate your septum. Yeah. But like there's something viscerally horrifying about that to me. Oh, yeah. And like, you know, I have allergies like everyone else. I do nasal spray. I don't enjoy it. So I can't imagine for fun. And that's like a liquid. So it doesn't even like you do the nasal spray. You don't feel it after a minute, but like powder. Yeah. Ooh, it's like. You know how some people don't like even thinking about feeling cotton? <laughs> like just thinking about it sends shivers down your spine. I'm upsetting have, a portion of the audience. It's like that for me. Like just that. thinking about snorting a bunch of powder makes my spine itch. I have never heard of that. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's this whole sensory thing. Like, yeah. It's I'm freaking myself out talking about it this much, actually. <laughs> Our last one this week is from New York City. And kids will be kids. Teens will be teens. They will do stupid shit. Obviously. Sometimes they will steal a vehicle and go on a joyride. And it's it's yeah, it's stupid shit. That's normal. That happens every day. Why are we talking about it? Well, in this case, the vehicle stolen was a subway train. Oh. Please say a pair took a New York City subway train on a joyride and crashed it. They have arrested one teen. Police have arrested a teen girl. They say took an empty New York subway city train on a brief joyride before they crashed it and fled. For male I got to respect the matching the bonnet to the to the outfit, though. Yeah. They're looking for a male companion. They believe was also pictured on the train. Surveillance photos released by the New York Police Department on Tuesday show one other person, uh, show one person dressed all in pink, including a pink shower cap and another in a blue tank top. It's not a shower cap. It's a bonnet. <laughs> Please arrest the 17. <laughs> Police arrested the 17-year-old girl Wednesday around noon. They've charged her with criminal possession, criminal mischief and reckless endangerment. The pair boarded an occupied train parked at the Briarwood subway station in Queens just after midnight and somehow got it running. They crashed it into another parked train and ran. It was unclear how much damage the prank caused. No injuries were reported. How the fuck... It's a train. It goes one way. You don't even have there to was steer no plan. it. These are children. There was no plan. <laughs> it was holy shit. That's unattended. Go. That was the plan. <laughs> like, <laughs> and honestly, Probably a more efficient way to get around Queens than having to drive. Queens well, is the second worst borough to drive in. The first being the Bronx. Of all the vehicles to crash, though, it's a train. Well, you yeah, but just because exactly you know how to start it going. doesn't mean you don't know how to stop it. Oh, my God. I promise well, okay, you, though, they're going right. to start the school year heroes. Catastrophe in the channel says, no, it goes two ways, technically. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Just, oh, how the fuck? 
Like, it's not like you couldn't see the other train in front of you when you started pushing the buttons. What did you think you were going to do? Swerve? There was no plan besides train. <laughs> that was the extent of the plan. Well, They're kids. You ask... Worse in Manhattan. Absolutely worse in Manhattan. Queens in the Bronx are bullshit to drive through. I've even been to New York and people start naming boroughs and I'm just like, I, okay, sure. That's a the street Bronx, over there, street over there, whatever. To make you understand the Bronx picture, it's like a penal colony for all of the worst pedestrians you can imagine. <laughs> like the God boss level of Frogger. <laughs> it's the Bronx. People are just darting out from behind buses with a stroller against the light. They don't give a fuck. I have I have never come so close to killing so many people as driving in the Bronx because people are just insane. Queens is just overcrowded and has two airports and a baseball stadium and ooh. It's like you can't do the trolley problem the home game. It's it's not <laughs> What are you doing? Maybe that's what it was. Maybe this is their ethics homework. Like I, I as a, as a kid, I did lots of stupid shit, but there are some buttons even I would not push. And if you, you would, put my you would have stolen a train. What if Little Nash do? was in a train station and the train was just open and unattended, you're gonna tell me you wouldn't have been like, I have a train now. We're, yeah, but there's a train in front of the train. Where the fuck was I going to take the train? They probably didn't know that until they were already going like 60 miles an hour. And fun fact, trains don't stop easily. You're going to like pick up all your friends I'm, and I'm, just sort of just just go around and around. I'm a little proud of them. Well, they did get caught. Yeah, that is a bummer. This is the first well, listen, thing. I'm just saying, if you got to get somewhere in Queens, you're better off doing this than trying to drive. <laughs> I don't blame them. If that's, you're trying to get from a story at a flushing, is, Jesus Christ, steal a train. Is that what we've learned this week? If in, you're, you're in New York, steal a train. That's that's the if lesson. You're in Queens. If you're in Queens, steal a train. That's that's what, you, what we want to teach people this week. That's that's the better than driving. Get the fuck off the road. Okie dokie. Uh, we've learned that if you're trying to get rid of your drugs before being arrested, inside you is not the option. Yeah. That's that's nothing good is going to come from that. There's no scenario where that ends well for like, you. On the best case scenario, you're going to be so fucked up that you're really not, you're not going to help your case whatsoever. The worst case scenario is something inside you will say, fuck it. <laughs> um, <laughs> We have learned that you don't need Disney's permission to name your kid Skywalker, but you probably shouldn't. Yeah, but also please don't name your kid Skywalker. Oh, probably particularly shouldn't. not fucking Loki Skywalker. It's like it's like the his weirdest, brother. Thor it, Solo. It's like the weirdest update of a boy named Sue. That kid is yeah. either gonna get the shit beat out of him or he's going to become the toughest motherfucker in all of London. He's good. Just don't fuck with Loki, man. Loki Skywalker. He'll rip your nuts off. We've learned. If you do not understand how the car works, maybe you should not try to steal it. Especially day one. Pick, pick, you know, find like a Yugo or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. S steal like a VW bug. You can just rev those things up. And hop in, and you could drive. That's all you got to do. They're not hard to steal. 
Um, and, and we've learned that if you're driving around with a million dollars in a cardboard box, something has gone wrong. We're not entirely sure what, based on the reporting, but something has gone horribly wrong. Yeah. And finally, we've learned you can, in fact, drive the same shrimp boat into the same bridge two days in a row. For some reason. The exact same part of the boat into the bridge. Like, it just... Just for fuck's sake, how the, it's like it's like the fucking uh, Deadpool with with the guy. I'm going to run you over to Zamboni in about 10 minutes. How do you not see the fucking bridge? Yeah, because the shrimp boats go very fast. You can't play chicken with a bridge. They don't dodge well. <laughs> 